Hello, this is Yvonne from Cool Team Jack Girl, and today I'm going to share how I convert images to grayscale. First, I want to touch on why I convert images to grayscale. Many of my quilts are transparency designs, designs that have overlapping shapes. To help me select fabrics with different values, like light, medium, and dark, I photograph my fabrics and convert them to grayscale. After refining my fabric selection process through making many transparency quilts, I've realized that volume fabric selection is important to consider for any quilt. In fact, many of my early quilts feel flat to me, and that is due to the fact that they lack value in my fabric selection. Now that I've covered why I like to convert my images to grayscale, let's look at what I will be presenting in this video. We're gonna be looking at tips for photographing fabrics and how to edit those photographs to be ready to do the conversion. Then I'm going to show how to do the conversion using Photoshop elements. And that is best if you are taking photographs with your camera and using your computer. And how to do all of this using your mobile device. So how to go through the photo taking process and editing process on a mobile device. Specifically, I will use my iPad to demo mobile device options. Keep in mind that software updates happen frequently, so this video shows the general process and gives you information on what to look for. Once I have made an initial fabric pull, the first step in the evaluation process is to take a good photograph of the fabrics together. The goal in this quick photograph is to capture an image that looks like what your eyes see. The ideal location to photograph a fabric grouping is in diffuse natural light. I'm lucky to have a large sliding glass door by my kitchen table, and I'm extra lucky to have an overcast day today. Most mornings the sun shines directly into my kitchen until the afternoon, and direct sunlight is too harsh and washes out the colors and values of fabrics. I like to arrange my fabric to overlay each other, like I show here using Northcott Colorworks Premium Solids in Iris, Heather, and Lilac Mist. When photographing, be sure to think about shadowing as you can see in this photo, if I stand with my back to the sliding glass door, I cast a shadow across the fabric, which is not helpful. Keep in mind that in direct sunlight, using your shadow might be a better option for your photograph. Once I have the fabric positioned, I zoom in to photograph only the fabric. Here's a tip. If you're using a camera, use the macro setting when you do this. After I take the photograph, I open it in my photo editor. When I take pictures with my camera, I edit my photos using Adobe Photoshop Elements. As I mentioned, I try to make the photograph match what my eyes see, so the first step for me is to look at the levels. To do this, I go to Enhance, Adjust Lighting, Levels. This histogram is nicely balanced, which means I photographed it in good light conditions. If I need to, I will adjust the input levels to crop down to a more balanced histogram. You can see that as I slide these around, the image changes. This image is fine without adjustment, so I'll just put everything back and cancel out. Next, I evaluate the color. In this case, the colors are too blue compared to the actual fabric, so let's see if I can adjust it. To do that, I'm going to go to Enhance, Adjust Color, Adjust Hue Saturation. To begin, I always start by sliding the hue adjuster around. Sliding it to the left makes the fabrics look even more blue. Sliding it to the right, and it starts to take on the more red undertones that I see with my eyes when I look at the fabric. So I will leave this at around plus 23, which matches what I see when I look at the fabrics in person. Once I am happy with how the photograph looks compared to the fabric I see, I'm ready to convert the photograph to grayscale. In Photoshop, that is done by going to Image, Mode, Grayscale. The first time you do this, a dialog box appears. I opt to leave the Don't Show Again checkbox empty so that I can get the warning each time. So I just say OK. Then the image is in grayscale. Once the image is in grayscale, I can evaluate if the difference between my light and medium is about the same as between my medium and dark fabrics. I will repeat this process over and over until I get the distribution of values that I want. So now let's look at how to do this process using a mobile device. Taking a photograph requires the same steps 
that we discussed earlier in the video. Lay your fabrics out in good, indirect, diffuse, natural light, and zoom in as best you can to get a photograph of your fabrics together. Once you have your photograph, go into your mobile device's photo editor and look for the Edit button. Most editors have several options, and many of the icons look alike between mobile devices. Let's take a look at what this overlapping three dots looks like. On my iPad, if you touch that overlapping three dot option, what you're going to see are filters. I do not recommend that you use filters to adjust your photograph. In some cases, the options that I'm about to show for how I do recommend to edit a photograph are not really available. So if that is the case, your best option is probably to look for a black and white, grayscale, or mono filter. However, that is only a last resort, depending on your particular mobile device. So let's click cancel and go back to the main screen. Now that we're back at the main editing screen, let's take a look at what this dial menu has to offer us. There are several options, and this is going to be very similar to the process that I showed within Photoshop. First, we're going to evaluate the light quality of the photo by tapping on the light. Here you'll see that you have a slider. You can move your finger up and down and change how light or dark the photo appears. However, I recommend that instead you tap the three little list icon below the sliders. That opens up a different menu. From here you can change the exposure, highlights, shadows, brightness, contrast, and the black point of the photo. To do that, you would simply tap on whichever you are most interested in, say exposure, and then you would slide around and change the exposure of the photograph. This is very similar to the options or behind the scene options that you're doing when you're looking at levels in Photoshop. When you're happy with the way the lighting looks on your image, click Close to go back. Next we're going to take a look at color. So again, the process here is we're going to change the lighting of the photo and then get the color of the photo correct to match what we see with our eyes. In the color menu, it's just like the light menu. You can slide around to adjust the color, and this may be a good option. Just like before when I slid around and saw bluer and then redder fabric tones, this might be the best way to approach changing the color to make it match what you see with your eyes. But if that doesn't work, again, you can go into the more advanced options by clicking on the list icons below. Within there, you can change your saturation, contrast, and cast. So again, the goal here is to edit our photograph on our mobile device to make the fabrics look as close to what we see with our eyes as possible. When we're happy, click Close. And then the final option is black and white, and this is where we're going to turn the image to grayscale. So now that we have the photo looking like the way we want, let's tap on black and white. Again, it looks just like the previous two options for light and color where you can slide things around. However, in this case, I say do not, absolutely do not move or slide around on that bar. We've already made all the adjustments to the photo that we want. The photo, look, the colors looked just like what we wanted. So all we want to do is convert it to black and white. To do that, tap where it says B and W, and the image converts to grayscale. Then we will cancel out of this menu diagram and save our image in grayscale. Again, once we have our photograph in grayscale, then we are going to look at how our fabrics look. Is the difference between the light and medium fabric about the same as it is between the medium and the dark? Because I was using solid fabrics in this example, the difference between the colorized version and the grayscale version is not very drastic. However, sometimes when you're working with prints, you will find that what you see with your eyes surprises you when you turn it into grayscale, so finding that step difference in value is very much different. What you think might be a light and a medium tone might turn out to be two very medium tone fabrics. So going through this process until you find the distribution of values that works best for you and your project is worth doing. 
I hope this was informative. Thanks for following along, and I look forward to seeing what you create.